messages to convey to the House. The first one is on the referral by His Excellency the President of the Finance Bill, National Assembly Bill number 30 of 2024, and bridging the physical deficit in the financial year 2024-25 budget. Honourable members, I wish to take this opportunity to welcome you back to the House after the just concluded short recess. You recall that the recess was preceded by illegal access and damage the presence of Parliament by unauthorized persons at the tail end of the consideration of the Finance Bill 2024. We have ventilated on this and other pertinent matters during the members' Kamukunji this morning and I commend members for the bipartisan discussions. Having said that, I wish to report to the House that on 27th June 2024, I received a memorandum from His Excellency the President referring the Finance Bill, National Assembly Bill Number 30 of 2024 back to the House for reconsideration in accordance with the provisions of Article 115 of the Constitution. Members of the bar take the nearest seats. This will be a little long. Take the nearest seat, side the poster. Take the nearest seat. Honourable Members, in the memorandum, His Excellency the President expressed reservations on the contents of the bill in its entirety and recommended the deletion of all clauses of the bill. In making the recommendations, the President noted the widespread expression of dissatisfaction by the public on the contents of the bill. Therefore, the proposed deletion of all the provisions of the bill will accord with its general rejection by the public. Honourable Member, Standing Order 42.2 provides that if a passage yes, sorry. if a message is received from the President at a time when the House is not in session, the Speaker shall forthwith cause the message to be transmitted to every member and report the message to the House on the day the House next sits. Consequently, in keeping with the provisions of Standing Order 42-2, on 27 June 2024, I notified all members of the message from the President and referred the memorandum from the President to the Departmental Committee on Finance and National Planning for expeditious consideration. Honorable Members, following the submission of the memorandum, my office received several inquiries from Members of Parliament and the general public regarding the fate of the bill and the manner of bringing the physical deficit arising from its rejection. Various misleading opinions have also been advanced on the fate of the bill following its referral back to the House. Given the gravity and import of the matter, I issued an explainer with a view to creating clarity and understanding on both procedural and legal tenets relating to the referral. Honorable members, one of the primary concerns then was on whether the President can propose the deletion of all operative clauses in a bill or indeed the entire bill. From the onset, I wish to clarify that the President's memorandum recommending rejection of the entire bill, though significant, was neither exceptional in our legislative history nor new to this august House. Members may recall that on 2nd May 2024, I conveyed a message from the President relating to the referral of the Penal Code Amendment Bill, National Assembly Bill, number 56 of 2022, back to the House for reconsideration. 
In the memorandum, the President expressed reservation on Clause 2 of the Bill, which was the operative provision in the Bill, and further recommended its deletion. This essentially constituted a rejection of the whole Bill. Similarly, members at the bar take the nearest seats The nearest seats Similarly, in, in the 11th and 12th parliaments, the then president referred the Central Bank Amendment Bill, National Assembly Bill Number 28 of 2014, and the Law of Contract Amendment Bill, National Assembly Bill Number 1 of 2019, back to the National Assembly for reconsideration. In both instances, the recommendation from the president was the deletion of the operative clauses of the bills, which in essence constituted rejection of the said bills. Honorable members, a strict reading of Article 115 of the Constitution shows that no limitation is imposed on the nature of reservations or indeed the recommendations that the President ought to make on a bill. Indeed, this is also reflected in the practice in other comparative jurisdictions. For instance, in the U.S. Congress, the President, while referring a bill back to the House, may either choose to provide general recommendations based on the reservations to the bill or propose the actual text to be added or deleted from the specified parts of the bill. Honorable members, concerns were also raised on whether the Finance Bill 2024, having been referred back to the National Assembly, would become law due to affliction of time on the basis of the provisions of Article 115 of the Constitution. For clarity, Article 115 of 6 of the Constitution states, and I quote, 115.6, if the President does not ascend to a bill or refer it back within the period prescribed in Clause 1, the bill shall be taken to have been ascended to on the expiry of that period. For context, Article 115 one of the Constitution provides that within 14 days after receipt of a bill, the President shall A. Ascend to the bill, B. Refer the bill back to Parliament for reconsideration by Parliament, noting any reservations that the President has concerning the bill. A clear reading of these provisions reveals that the 14-day period applies the President's action regarding ascend or refusal to ascend to a bill. As soon as any of the actions contemplated under Article 115 one is undertaken by the President within the timelines prescribed, the application of Article 115 six ceases to apply. In this regard, I wish to reiterate that the Constitution ought not to be construed in a narrow or sophistic sense. The Constitution should be interpreted broadly and liberally in accordance with the guiding principles provided under Article 259 one of the Constitution. Bearing this in mind, it becomes evident that the 14-day period specified in Article 115 is a timeline for the President's action and not a date when the bill automatically becomes law. Therefore, the concerns alluding to the possibility of the Finance Bill 2024 becoming law due to a fluxion of time were and still are unfounded and a miscomprehension of the provisions of the Constitution. This also explains why the House was not recalled from recess for special sittings. Honorable Members, now that the regular sittings of the House have resumed, I wish to state that the Standing Order 154-2 requires the House to consider the President's reservations within 21 days when the House next meets. Under normal circumstances, the House would have had 21 days from today within which to consider and dispense with the memorandum. However, noting that the memorandum had already been referred to the Departmental Committee on Finance and National Planning for consideration on the 27th June 2024, 
have been briefed that the committee is yet to conclude its consideration and shall table a report to the House on or before Tuesday, 30th July 2024, that is next week. Honourable Members, permit me at this point to remind the House of the Speaker's communication of 28th July 2015 concerning the consideration of the President's reservations to a bill and amendments thereto. Members of the bar, take the nearest seats. The nearest seats. <coughs> Honorable members, permit me at this point to remind the House of the Speaker's communication on 28th July 2015 concerning the consideration of the President's reservations to a bill and amendments thereto. Take a seat, uh, Honorable Member. As by the guidance, any member who wishes to move the House to reinstate any clause of the Finance Bill 2024 shall be required to marshal the support of at least 233 members of this House. This is in keeping with the provisions of Article 115.4 of the Constitution, which requires that such a, a proposal be supported by at least two-thirds of the members of the National Assembly. Conversely, agreement with the President's reservations and the recommendation to delete all the clauses of the Bill shall only require the support of a simple majority of the members present and voting. This is in line with the provisions of Article 115.2a of the Constitution, as read with Article 122.1 of the Constitution. Honorable Members, when the memorandum will be scheduled by the House Business Committee for the clause-by-clause -clause consideration of the, peer, the bill, the House will convert itself into a committee of the whole House for that purpose. Any amendments to be proposed to the bill will be proceeded with in the manner I have guided. Honorable Members, having conveyed the message from the President, I now wish to address the various measures that need to be undertaken to bridge the fiscal deficit arising from the rejection of the Finance Bill 2024. On the Division of Revenue Act 2024, Article 218 of the Constitution requires Parliament to introduce the Division of Revenue Bill and the calendar allocation of Revenue Bill at least two months before the end of each financial year. The Division of Revenue Bill divides revenue raised by the national government among the national and county levels of government. On its part, the calendar allocation of Revenue Bill divides the revenue allocated to the county level of government among the counties. As members will recall, His Excellency the President ascended to the Division of Revenue Bill Act 2024 on 10th June 2024. The Act provides for the division of revenue raised nationally between the national government and the county governments for the financial year 2024-25. In particular, the Act provides that the total shareable revenue is Kenya shillings 2.9 trillion, out of which 2.5 trillion was allocated to the national government and 400 billion was allocated to county governments. The revenue apportioned by the Division of Revenue Act was based on projections of revenue intended to be raised by the national government in financial year 2024-25. As such, the amounts in the Division of Revenue Act 2024 may only be realized if the projected revenues are actually collected by the national government. Any shortfall in the projected revenue collection has a significant bearing on the shares apportioned between the two levels of government. Honorable Members, it is estimated that the rejection of the Finance Bill 2024 will location a financial gap of approximately $346 billion. This gap shall significantly impact the amounts apportioned by the Division of Revenue Act. The revenue due to counties under the County Allocation of Revenue Bill 2024 and the monies appropriated to finance the budget for
for financial year 2024-25. On the count allocation of revenue bill 2024, I am aware that on 10th July 2024, His Excellency the President did refer back the count allocation of revenue bill 2024 to the Senate for reconsideration in light of the anticipated fiscal deficit. Article 219 of the Constitution obligates the national government to transfer the equitable share apportioned to counties in the Division of Revenue Act without reduction. To ensure that the national government does not default on its obligations, the Division of Revenue Act 2024 ought to be amended to reflect the revenue that the national government is capable of transferring to the counties in view of the current reality. Failure to amend the Division of Revenue Act 2024 shall result in the national government owing a financial obligation which it cannot clearly meet. In addition to the proposed reconsideration of the current allocation of Revenue Bill 2024 by the Senate, it is expected that the Chairperson of the Budget and Appropriations Committee shall introduce a bill to effect necessary amendments to the Division of Revenue Act 2024. On supplementary estimates one, with regard to the monies already appropriated by the House to finance the budget for the year 2024-25, I wish to remind the House of the notification I issued on 12th July 2024, informing you of the submission of the first supplementary estimates for the financial year 2024-25, which I referred to the Budget and Appropriations Committee and the Departmental Committees for expedited consideration. The supplementary estimates seek to rationalize the financial year 2024-25 budget estimates to align with the revised physical framework and actualize expenditure cuts across the three arms of government, constitutional commissions and independent offices. As guided in my notification on 12th July 2024, the Budget and Appropriations Committee is expected to table its report on the Supplementary Estimates 1 on or before tomorrow, Wednesday 24th July 2024. The House shall thereafter consider the said estimates and the result and legislation to give effect to the revised physical framework and the proposed expenditure reductions. The House is accordingly guided, and I thank you. Members of the bar, take the nearest seats before the next communication. Yes, uh, Honorable Junet. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, I wish it to comment on this matter. If you know communication from the chair is never debated. Mr. Speaker, it's true, but this is a very, very weighty matter, Mr. Speaker, the, the memorandum from the President on the Finance Bill. Yes. For the simple reason, Mr. Speaker, first, when you look at this memorandum, you realize that Kenyans have not yet come to understand very well on how Parliament operates. Mm -hmm. What stages that a bill goes through? The first reading, second reading, third reading, and also when what happens when a bill is presented to the president for assent. So, Mr. Speaker, we used to have, as a friend of mine said that yesterday, that of a colleague of mine, we used to have op open days in Parliament where people used to be taken through these processes of the bill making, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this is a very, very important decision that has been made on a very important bill in this country, Mr. Speaker. And you know very well, before we went on recess, how emotive and how controversial this bill was, Mr. Speaker. And there are people in the country, our voters, who believe that this bill is, is, getting, is becoming a law, Mr. Speaker. They believe that this bill is going to be implemented. But, Mr. Speaker, and this is unprecedented situation because this is the first time since I came to this parliament 10 years ago that a bill, the president has deleted every clause of a bill, Mr. Speaker. I'm not sure whether he has deleted even the title of the bill. 
We need to check that in the memorandum. But he has deleted every clause of the bill, Mr. Speaker. It's unprecedented. It has never happened. In the last 10 years, we used to have a memorandum that comes to the House where the President could have issues with one clause, two or three clauses. This is the first time that a whole bill has been deleted. What does that mean, Mr. Speaker? If you ask me as a, as a legislature here, because you have to raise two-thirds numbers to undo what he has recommended, according to me, this bill is, uh, what, what do they say, dead as a dodo, Mr. Speaker. They say dodo is an animal that used to live in Malaysia, which is instinct now. So the bill is instinct as we... Uh, uh, Malaysia, Madagascar. Madagascar, you are right, Mr. Speaker, in Madagascar. So, Mr. Speaker, this bill as we speak is dead because I don't think we have the capacity to raise two-thirds in this house and we don't intend to, to do because of the whip, I will not provide the two-thirds from our side to, to undo what the President has done. So, Mr. Speaker, it is very important to give clarity to our voters, to give clarity to Kenyans that this bill is dead. We only need to agree on a burial debt where we are going to do the, the, the burial rites and we bury it properly and we forget about it. it, is it is In our area it's called ter Teruburu. We just do the Teruburu Thank and you. we finish this thing, Mr. Speaker. We've made your point. Okay. Give him the mic. My last point is this, Mr. Speaker. In your communication also, other than the, the issues that came back from the presidency, is the issue of uh, how to deal with the supplementary budget one and uh, the county revenue allocation. Mr. Speaker, I want to urge this House again. Let us look at those things objectively. It is this House that can know where to cut that money from in the budget, Mr. Speaker. And I want to urge the Budget Committee to sit down and look with a tooth comb the budget that was passed and make sure that we remove excess baggage and excess fat from areas that Kenyans don't need money for. Let us not touch issues that are very important to Kenyans. That is the work of the Budget Committee. Let them stand up to the occasion and the majority leader has been a budget chairman for seven years. He knows. He can guide them. Let us not cut the money from where we think that the Kenyans Thank will feel paid. So, Speaker, with those field marks, I, I agree the deletion and I am, will be presiding over the burial of that, that bill when it is brought here. Honorable members, I'm not opening debate on this. The communication is not to elicit debate. But Junette is right. The mischievous and misleading comments about the fate of the bill upon rejection unfortunately came from some of our own members here. Members continued churning out fake news to the public about the fate of the bill to the effect that within 14 days it was going to become law, which was false. One senior member even sent me a draft bill to repeal the finance bill that was not an act of law. And I politely reminded him that you cannot repeal an existing act. You cannot repeal a rejected bill. And uh, this point comes home to all of us. The finance bill was the genesis, probably the catalyst of the events that we have witnessed in the country. Continuing to churn fake news about the finance bill is to compound the problem in the country. So I urge all of us to follow the procedure Junet, you are right that it might be difficult for any member proposing to save a clause in the bill to raise two thirds majority, knowing how this house operates. But under the Constitution and the standing orders, we must go through the entire rigmarole to make sure that the bill comes back to the house. You sit as a committee of the whole, you consider each clause. If there is nobody challenging the deletion by the president, you vote with a simple majority present and voting, meaning our quorum number being 50, half of that is 25. They can vote 
to 26 can vote to support the president's memorandum. Any one of you who wants to save any part of the bill, including the title, marshal 233 members when it comes so that you can vote to save it. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, Maclap. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I wish to, on behalf of the Finance Committee, to report that we've already met as a committee and done our report, and we are ready to table tomorrow morning. Mr. Speaker. Excellent. Then we will finish it even faster. Members on their feet, take your seats. I have another message to deliver. Bowen, stop greeting colleagues and take a seat. Honorable Member, 